Hi dear friends, welcome back to the series on success image, a guide to relish and realize goals. In this video, which is titled as Carry Your Dreams, we will begin. Let me start with a quote by Dr. Eric Byrne, a psychologist of fame. He goes on to say, we are born princes and the civilizing process turns us into frogs. That is, each one is born into this world as prince or princess. In the process of being brought up, they are converted into frogs. Our aim is not to make them a better frog looking for a better pond, but to restore them back to their original state as prince or princess. Now, why is this series of video important for you? How can you shorten the stagnation period in your journey to success? Imagine you have landed a job that you had dreamt of for quite some time. It is the job of a lifetime for you and you had not only dreamt but had worked for it for a long time. You had focused and dedicated your education towards such a job. You had challenged many of your friends and you succeeded in realizing it. You remember the day you had seen your role model in conversation with all grace and majesty, with a known friend or a stranger. You grew up seeing him with a burning desire to be like him or her someday. You would be yearning to tell many of your near and dear ones the story of your successful journey so far the joys and the pains that made you and now you are standing at the threshold of what appears and rightly so a beginning of a successful career. You feel like dancing, flying up above the birds, rejoicing. You are eagerly waiting to see yourself on the first day in your new job but alas, there is still a few weeks away. Your prospective company want you to walk in onto your dream job vivaciously. You wonder where this opportunity takes you. All of a sudden, a known person let the beans spill of this organization into the fragile ears of your dad or someone close to you that the organization is so and so, do not respect so and so, has disregard to certain basic minimal ethics and values, carries an insipid doubtful culture, etc. Your dad unsuspectingly to the good of you spills it into your ears. Imagine how benevolent a disappointment is there within you. Suddenly you feel the duality of your mind props up, curiously searching for the evidences unsuspectingly, but still you want to disbelieve what you heard. For human sensory always like to believe that which is comfortable for it. The tendency of the human brain is to stay in its comfort zone. When we speak of the comfort zone, it is not wrong to be bound by it, but it is malicious not to be rational and work towards your dream for the sake of just the comfort zone. For this, one need to have a mindset to tread the path watchfully and achieve your goals and succeed in it. I have personally seen many youngsters and middle-aged in this sort of dilemma. When once you have the duality of thought in your mind, it is rather a uphill task at anything you do. You may be having the best of the talents, but working with two thoughts that keep bombarding your mind is no easy task. Quite often is a recipe for disaster. Sir Henry Ford said, I quote, just know you can never achieve what you doubt you can achieve. Another from Sir Henry Ford, if you think you can or you can't, you are always right. When you have taken the first step, the second is obvious to follow. Either you can take this and move up in your career, earning lots of credos in the journey, or you can set the opportunity aside and wait for another one and another one and another, which may or may not come. The choice is yours. 
you are the creator of your destiny which one do you want to choose no one has ever achieved anything in life or in business without courage adventurism and determination is such a trait that even failure fears it every challenge in life does not start and end in the comfort of our experiences and expectations once you tune yourself to accept challenges then surmounting challenges become a unique comfort zone in itself you will see that the challenges in your career will take you to new heights every moment breathing a fresh energy of confidence in every small and big way surging you ahead like a wave surfer imagine a wave surfer by all logic he or she has to ride the waves and be on top of it the moment you miss it or show the tendency to go under it you become oblivious and maybe forever the wave surfer always has to anticipate the waves to stay on top just before the wave he or she is riding start to descend he or she has to shift to the next one working in organizations too are such experiences like in surfing some seas are mild and calm and some are treacherous it is also the time of the day and the day of the month that matters when you surf if you fail to keep yourself on top of the waves and ride them then the waves will overpower you in order to be on top you need self confidence without the self confidence nothing is achievable perhaps only thing that one can do without self confidence is beggary this has many connotations like flattering seeking favors expectations etc one must develop huge amounts of self confidence derived out of his or her own talents you have to put in enough efforts to discover the talents in you and passionately follow the journey of success of a lifetime when you have prepared yourself to this extent don't you want to know what challenges you face in your new workplace how to have a perfect work life balance how to maximize your earnings how to be satisfied with life always this reminds me of something that i learned and applied all through my career it goes like this work hard play to the allowable limit never do a friend a dirty trick never compare yourself with anyone else live the moment to the utmost of its possibilities be satisfied with life always but never with oneself i don't know who coined these lines which i came across about 26 years ago it has been one of my strongest ideas ever since then i pin it on my personal board wherever i have worked so far when you have decided to put so much at stake to take a flight of life it sounds good to be prepared to the challenges you face when you start to work isn't it for this you need to equip yourself with the sharpest of the skill sets and sail through the rough weather while working in organizations michael hyatt said i quote courage is the willingness to act in spite of fear let me give you a live example anju bobby george was an athlete of fame from india who had won a long jump bronze at the world athletics championship in 2003 in paris she recently revealed that she achieved this feat with one kidney a host of problems and allergic to painkillers with a dead take off leg she goes on to say i quote the general perception of the people is that i have a perfect body but the fact is that i achieved all the success in my field by overcoming all the difficulties i hope that sharing of my experience will help motivate all aspiring sports persons it was just 20 days ahead of the paris world athletics championship i overcame all the issues and won a medal in paris it was shocking news for me but bobby my husband motivated me to continue my career and achieve success he even offered his kidney if i face a problem if i had gone public with my health then the situation would have been different 
unquote. Apparently, her husband was her coach as far as I know. There are innumerable people like this. You will find who have overcome the challenges posed before them to reach the pinnacle of success. What more proof do you want to realize that you can achieve the unsurmountable merely by willpower? Now let us see what is an organization and why is it important to know the working of organizations. An organization in its truest sense is a collection of positive ideas. It is a conglomerate of human potential. In its simplest sense, we are ourselves an organization. We have the various functions of the organization done by our various parts of the body. There are some functions that happen by virtue of programs which we may refer to as processes. These are involuntary functions like circulatory system, digestive system, excretory system, nervous system, over which there is no conscious control over. If any of these functions behave abnormally, the body organization is affected. Thus, the structure of the organization has many physical and non-physical entities. The physical entities of the body are the organs that do their routine functions. Then there are non-physical entities which are controlled by the mind. When a human body has to stay healthy and perform effectively, all the parts of the body, both physical and non-physical, have to perform in synergy. First of all, there should be a sense of purpose for every action that the body performs. A collection of individuals makes a family. A collection of families makes a society. A family or a society is an organization in its truest sense. Your organization is a collection of entities from the society. Is it not so very important to know the business organization in particular? As you step into an opportunity of your lifetime? Certainly yes. Let us see these organizations. In managerial parlance, there are two types of organizations. That is the line organization and the staff organization. The line organization is that part of the organization that is the action oriented one. These are the sales teams, projects, the service teams, procurement, etc., which directly confront with the external agencies like customers, vendors, contractors, etc. These teams have direct visibility to the customers, vendors, and external agencies. The customers look at these as the face of the organization and are dependent on these teams for fulfilling their goals. Line organizations are also compared synonymously with military organizations. Line is a predominantly hierarchical organization and following the line of command orders and implementing them is very important. No leeway is given to flout or ignore the line of command. In a line organization, everything that is to be done is time bound and relies on task completion which is critical. There is no scope for neglecting superiors instructions and discipline is of utmost importance. Line organization needs to possess quick decision making, mobilizing and execution capabilities. The staff organization is the support administrative functions of an organization. It comprises of functions like human resources, accounting, finance, estimating, costing, administration, design and engineering, information technology, etc. primarily involved in the support and administrative functions of the organization. These functions exist primarily for the support of the line organization and at times may be involved in balancing the management and other statutory compliances with the line functions objectives. You may see staff organizations in secretariats, banks, post offices, etc. predominantly. Friends, we come to the end of this video. We request you to like the video in case you have liked it by pressing the like button and also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscription link below this video or clicking on the subscription which follows later in this video. It's very important because subscription motivates us to do more and more and dissipate more and more information and knowledge. At the same time, 
the later videos may be restricted to only subscribers. Hence, please subscribe. Thank you.